and welcome to a brand new series of Talking Threads, the textile innovation show with me Fiona Harron and me Harry McMullen. This week's show is sponsored by Bain and Company, a global management consultancy firm who is partnering with WTIN on their global state of supply chain traceability survey. To participate in the survey you can click the below link which will also be available on the Talking Threads homepage. Yes, now on to this week's news and the International Textile Machinery Federation has announced that textile machinery sales may be finally returning to pre-COVID levels. The Federation's latest survey reveals that machinery sales for March were only down by 9% compared to the same time last year. In the height of the pandemic, sales were down as low as 33%, illustrating a move in the right direction. Elsewhere, Hong Kong Polytechnic University has developed a highly permeable and super elastic conductor which can be used for wearable electronic devices. The novel conductor is fabricated by coating or printing liquid metal onto an electrospun elastomeric fibre mat and is aimed at various applications including health monitoring devices, soft robotics and on-skin electronics. The digital textile printing market is gearing up for the virtual Drupa show, taking place from Wednesday to Friday next week. So far, it's been revealed that DuPont will launch new Flexo plate plate making equipment offerings and the market will unveil its new 100 printer series, alongside other additions to its product portfolio. The theme of this year's digital showcase is Embrace the Future. US-based Lycra has announced the launch of its first performance offerings made from 100% textile waste. Coolmax and Thermolite Echo Made Fibres are launched in collaboration between Lycra and Itochu Corporation. A unique depolarization and refining process is used to convert textile waste, which consists of scraps from garment manufacturers into fibres with properties comparable to virgin polyester. And finally, Canico, a subsidiary of Turkish textile companies Canapa Paper and Natura Textile, has created the world's first sublimation paper range made from 100% recycled material. The silver range includes five core paper products containing various coatings and grammage to accommodate for a number of textile applications. Now on to today's show and earlier this week, Otis Robinson spoke with Siva Kumar Neri Annan from Ooster to discuss its new Quantum 4.0 yarn clearer, part of a range of sensor technologies that enable intelligent quality control for yarn production. Quantum 4.0 is Uster's new and advanced yarn clearer system. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about the Quantum 4.0 solution, what it does and how it can help mills? It is, it is uh, security, it, it provides more security, it's uh, more flexibility, it's more prevention and also connectivity. So from a security point of view, um, because of these multiple sensor principles, you can actually look at defects um, much more, uh, much more defects, and also uh, cut them out or replace them with a splice. So that means the yarn is becoming um, uh, with a higher quality and also more consistency. Uh, but at the same time, it also gives more flexibility because uh, now spinners can run much more applications than they could do before. So it it it, it opens more possibilities. Let's say. Um, but then uh, typically it's not good to just cut out a defect because uh, spinners want to prevent it in the first place if it's possible. So we enable prevention through connectivity. Since it's connected to a wider system inside the mill, so uh, we can basically connect to other machines or other processes to say, hey, this, this particular defect came from, um, I don't know, a ring spinning process uh, machine 25, uh, position 420, and so then, the spinner can actually go and prevent it so that the next time he doesn't have to cut it out. Uh, and that saves waste, that saves energy, and that improves uh, costs and profits. And how do the smart dewer sensor technologies work? How do they perform their quality control work? So it's two eyes working somehow in tandem so that nothing is left to chance, let's say. At the same time, smart duo also is like an intelligent combo. So if, if you just had the capacity eye, then it wouldn't see some, some defects. If you had just the optical eye, it wouldn't see some defects. But together, they can see some defects. So for example, a, a twist variation is a, is a typical, or a density problem is a typical 
issue that was not able to be detected before, but cost a lot of claims. But today, um, because both these principles are looking at the eye and they're intelligently combining the signals, suddenly you can detect also those kind of problems. And that means the fabric looks much more even. And what inspired the development of the technology? Uh, basically customers, I must say. So, uh, you know, uh, for years and years, this has been a, this has been a, uh, let's say, a vision. Uh, what, they were, the, what they were not very happy was they wanted the sensitivity of the capacitive principle and they wanted the flexibility of the optical principle. Uh, but it was very difficult to combine these two. And now for the first time, basically, we managed to do it. So what impact do you hope that this sense technology will have on the iron sector? So first of all, we hope that uh, the, the spinners are able to produce a much better quality of yarn, uh, but more importantly, also consistent quality of yarn, so that the next processes, for example, um, weaving, knitting, etc., are operating much more smoothly, and the fabric turns out to be even better uh, than what it was before quantum 4.0. That is one impact. And, and the other impact is really that uh, uh, spinners basically have to worry less about the technology uh, and, and, and the device itself and the connectivity takes care of most of the, of, of the challenges in optimizing it. So we think, yeah, from, from the flexibility point of view, uh, it, it gives more freedom to operate for, for the textile mills to, to do more things. And of course, long term, we hope that the yarn and the fabric quality sort of improves. An interesting innovation there, and it's great to see even more advanced applications for smart technologies in the yarn manufacturing sector. Yeah, and from such a big player in the industry, we can no doubt expect even more from Ulster's smart duo technology in the future. It's time for a short video now from this week's sponsor, Bain & Company. And after that, we'll be speaking with Devon Chemicals about its new range of bio-based fragrances for textiles. At Bain, we believe bold steps and those who take them define the future. We seek out people who defy the perception of their own limits. Those with the ambition to lead, and courage to adapt. Because those who leave an enduring mark are the ones who see the world differently and challenge themselves to be exceptional. We walk that path with our clients every step of the way. We help them see their future in a new light, discover opportunities they may never have imagined and deliver results that create even greater possibilities. This is where aspiration meets innovation, where candor fuels collaboration, and impossible surrenders to teamwork. With energy, with purpose, with a passion for what we do, we champion the bold to achieve the extraordinary. Now, Jessica Owen recently caught up with Vanessa Daleman and Ricardo Costa from Devon Chemicals to learn more about a new range of bio-based fragrances it has introduced for textiles called Sentil that uses traceable raw materials. Well, hello both. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, so Devan has just launched a range of bio-based fragrances for textiles. Um, can you firstly explain what these are and, and what the purpose is? Sustainability is something that is in the core value of the events. Uh, so it's, we are uh, trying and it's a focus. Uh, and it's a focus even before it's becoming an urgent issue like we are seeing in the last years. So uh, this development with these bio-based fragrances, uh, they were a natural thing for us. Uh, we are also following and all these trends we are seeing, for example, in the cosmetic industry also, they are moving to those kind of fragrances. We are seeing several consumer brands that are moving to natural fragrances also, uh, leaving the synthetic fragrances. So for us, it was also natural uh, to develop those fragrances and those range of products. 
What are the types of scents that are included in this range then? And what are the different effects that they can have on people? Yeah, so we have developed till now four fragrances, uh, a lavender, a menthol, wild mint, and the citrus blend. Uh, the menthol and the wild mint are more refreshing fragrances, uh, while, for example, the lavender, it promotes uh, the well-being, the relaxation feelings, uh, and the citrus blend, it's more energizing effect, more an uplifting effect. And are you able to tell me about the process of how you um, take the fragrances and then you know, integrate them into the textiles? How does it all work? Yeah, so the process, we use a micro-encapsulation process. What does it mean? We create a miniature container uh, to protect the fragrances and it will protect fragrance from oxidation, from evaporation, also from contamination, uh, till we want the fragrance to be released. Uh, so after the micro-encapsulation, we apply uh, those products on textiles by standard application techniques like padding, for example, uh, and then the aroma will be released after uh, the consumer rub the fabric. Uh, once the consumer rub the fabric, the capsule will break and the fragrance will be released. Uh, also, a quick note, uh, just to tell you that we are also working on different techniques of application and we are working with a global leader in sustainable and eff efficient finishing uh, technologies for textiles. It's geonology uh, and we want to reduce the water consumption on the application techniques. Uh, we are also working on those type of uh, application techniques. Right, that sounds very interesting. Uh, Gina Logia seem to be doing a lot recently. I've heard their name come up quite a bit. Yeah. Mm. So, so how long can you smell them for? Do, do they last years or, or months or, or what are we looking at? It, it, it will depend. It will, because the fragrance it will be released after rubbing the fabric. So uh, if the, the consumer, they rub the fabric a lot, they will be released more, more quicker than we, if we use the fabric on a regular basis without uh, rubbing them a lot. So it will depend uh, on the use and how consumers uh, deal with the fabrics that have those uh, fragrances there. Okay, I understand. Um, now, you, you've already mentioned the importance of sustainability. Um, and I read that these raw materials are in fact traceable. Um, so how, how so and how important was that when you were developing the range? Yeah, for, for us, it was quite important because um, one of the, the key things on those kind of prayers and that move that we made is to guarantee that the people are really buying uh, natural fragrances and not other fragrances. So uh, to ensure that we include a marker, a tracer uh, in all our products that will ensure that we will be able to identify and to quantify and to, to make sure that people are really buying our product and then we can also make uh, the connection and being able to ensure the traceability of the raw materials that we are putting there. Um, for example, we know that uh, the natural aromas, uh, they are sourced from different parts of the world. Uh, each scent is very specific, so uh, different geographies are considered also. So it's really, we, we, we really need to ensure that we can make the traceability of the product and the tracer, the marker that we put there help us doing that. Now, finally, then, my last question is that I understand that initially the Centil range is for sort of home furnishings such as mattresses, pillows, upholstery. Um, have you had much demand in this area and are you considering other applications at all in future? Yes, we have. So uh, we indeed, we launched the product uh, for more bedding and home textile applications. And there the demand also is more towards, uh, well, circular um, economy and circular things. So also uh, towards more sustainable and bio-based ingredients. So yes, we get a lot of requests there. And also working together with Genealogia made, us, uh, made it possible to apply the technology um, onto garments and onto 
pieces that are already um, ready to use and ready to be worn. So that might open also new perspectives and new applications uh, for us as well and for the products. I think this focus on traceability will really meet the consumer demand we're now seeing to learn more about where ingredients come from. Yeah, and it's great to hear that Devon is working with Genealogia to enhance this sustainability story and target a wide range of applications. Well, that's all we've got time for today, but join us again next week for another update on the latest textile innovations making the headlines. See you soon.